The engineers have a large arsenal of advanced technologies that far exceed the capabilities of our own and make them a superior species, no doubt. But aside from their technological marvels, it is perhaps their dabbling in the field of bioengineering that has lifted them to godlike status. They've been able to create life, convert and change existing life to almost anything they desire, as well as possess the ability to eradicate life on a massive scale. Their most successful method of doing all this would be with their creation of the chemical agent known as Agent AO-3959X.91-15. But what exactly is this chemical agent? How is it so powerful and dangerous and why do they use it? For the purposes of keeping time during this dialogue, I'll be referring to the substance simply as the accelerant. We're not entirely sure what the accelerant actually is. The accelerant appears uh, as a thick black tar-like substance. Obviously, it is a highly mutagenic collection of chemicals that act to change the genetic structure of any and all life it contacts. How it does this is also largely unstudied. It is possible that it is itself a form of life, however it would be very hard to try and prove this either way, similar to how a virus could or could not be considered a living organism. It exists in a grey area. What we do know for sure though is that this substance is ancient, seemingly as ancient as the engineers themselves. Evidence suggests that this very accelerant, or at least a derivative of it, is what the engineers used during ritualistic sacrifices in order to seed life on various distant worlds, as well as our home world being Earth. With the engineers having storehouses for the liquid mutagen on worlds such as LV223, uh, within the Zeta 2 reticulized system. The accelerant is named as such due to its ability to accelerate the natural biological process of evolution. The accelerant when making contact with a foreign alien tissue, be it human, animal or xenomorph, will act to rapidly mutate this organism until it is far different from its original natural construction. In some cases the accelerant rather than simply mutating the organism, acts to destroy it at a molecular level, leaving behind with it husks of what once was life. Much like what occurred on Earth billions of years ago, the accelerant would appear to play a double role for the engineers and their society. On one hand, it would seem to be a thing of great reverence to them, a powerful symbol of their ability to create life and give it any form that they choose. Much like what occurred on Earth billions of years ago when they seeded this planet. But like all great things, sometimes they can be used to create, but something used to create can likewise become a weapon of destruction. When specifically they created the accelerant is unknown, and whether or not they created it or simply discovered it is also uh, a mystery. Something that cannot be ignored is its connection to the species Xenomorph XX121, specifically to the substance that the Xenomorphs Manumela Noxhydria or the facehugger deposits within a subdued host. This substance, like the accelerant, also is a fast-acting mutagenic substance, capable of spawning terrifying creatures. In this case, the Plagiarus Preopotent, otherwise known as a chestburster. During the P. Preopotent's formation, the substance deposited in the host by the facehugger acts to genetically reorganize the host's own cells and tissues into that uh, for the coming chest burster to grow with, similar in a way to how the accelerant is presumed to function. So because of that, theories have sprung up about this connection and what it could mean. Does this mean that the engineers created the accelerant from studies of the Xenomorph XX121, or vice versa? We simply know too little at this stage to make any discernible conclusions about any of this. Though the accelerant does appear to mutate at random, this is not always the case. Particular, reoccurring horrific creatures seem to be generated amongst the more chaotic ones. Neomorphs, abominations, anathemas are just some of the reoccurring horrific creatures that are generated when organisms are subjected to the accelerant. 
Basically, any living organism that makes contact with even a minute amount of the accelerant has a few outcomes left. Death, becoming host to a parasitic monstrosity, or they might very well become the monster themselves through a series of horrible mutations. It can exist in two main states. One form is a liquid, and this form seems to be the one that the engineers use in order to store the substance and possibly the accelerant's safest form, if you can compare it to anything close to safe. As a liquid, its ability to mutate is still extremely potent, and even simple brief contact with the substance by an organism will likely result in eventual metamorphosis. The accelerant is kept in this form, presumably both for the reasons of spirituality and for weapon storage. When weaponized, the liquid is released in the atmosphere above a specific target, such as seen in the aftermath of Planet 4, uh, otherwise known as Paradise, in Sector 87, or such as the events surrounding the uh, fall of the Ariakas colony. When released, this extremely powerful bioweapon atomizes in the air in order to become a thick black cloud, killing and or mutating anything unlucky enough to be within the range of the black cloud of death. Within about the first two kilometers, the effects are about the same. We'll call this our ground zero. If dropped on a population, those in ground zero will undertake a process called petrification. These organisms begin to writhe, convulse, and spew up a mixture of their own tissues and the accelerant as it acts to break them apart from their most basic building blocks. Leaving behind nothing but a statue of a carbonized husk. Some organisms on the outskirts of the radius begin to develop into anathemas at a terminal stage, not having long before they also are broken down and ripped apart. Beyond the two kilometer radius, death is not a certainty yet, but things are still looking quite grim. Evidence has shown that between two to four kilometers from the initial release of the accelerant uh, as an aerosolized weapon is a mutation zone. Organisms within this zone will suffer through numerous mutations. Random creatures can be created alongside anathemas that pop up quite regularly, as well as abominations and the formation of neomorphic egg sacs when fungus, pollen, and other similar biological materials are present. Outside of this zone, you might be lucky enough to avoid initial infection. However, what didn't kill you falling to the ground might kill you after it's twisted every other living thing on it into ravenous beasts. Before you go, I wanted to let you know about the Acheron Colonial Marketplace, the one-stop shop for all Project Acheron merchandise. All proceeds go to fund our future endeavours under the project. So if you want to support the channel and look good doing it, pick up some Acheron merch. But what other data logs would you like to see? If you have any ideas or have any questions to be answered, please leave them in the comments or contact me directly through the Project Acheron Discord. If you enjoyed today's segment, please leave a like and share the video. And if you really want to support what we do here and gain access to a bunch of awesome rewards, consider becoming a Project Acheron channel member, like Project Director Chris Dasinger and team member Raunchy. I hope to see you all here again very soon, but until then, this is the Acheron Project, signing off.